Before you begin installing your Masonite door, it's important to review all instructions on storage and handling, finishing and installation in their entirety, and then gather all hardware and tools required. If not installing immediately, doors should arrive on site at the best possible time and be stored upright in a clean, dry, well-ventilated area away from dirt, water, or any heat source. Recommended tools, hardware, and supplies for this installation are shown. Accurate measurement of the opening is critical for installation success. You may have already performed these steps to determine the appropriate door to purchase, but a review here will confirm the measurements and help ensure a seamless installation. If you're replacing an existing door, you'll need to remove the old door and jam before measuring the rough opening. Make sure to note the side of the door hinges and the direction the door opens. If you're reusing the existing trimmer casing, take care to remove it without damaging it or the wall. Use a utility knife to score around the trim, then gently lift it off. Clean the rough opening of any dirt, debris, old nails, or screws. From the interior, take measurements at two to three different points along the width and height of the rough opening and record the smallest dimension. Subtract one inch from the width and one half inch from the height, and this will provide the correct size of the door that fits your opening. Now, measure the wall depth from the outer surface of the drywall from one side to the other. Depending on wall construction, this measurement will indicate the size of the jam needed. 4 and 9 16 inch jams will require subfloor at least 6 inches in depth. 6 and 9 16 inch jams will require subfloor at least 8 inches in depth. Now, let's start installing the door. Because doors are heavy, we recommend having a second person help with the installation. Check to see that the subfloor is level and that the interior floor doesn't interfere with the operation of the door. If not level with an offset greater than one eighth of an inch, or if the door drags, the subfloor may require adjustments. Remove all packaging, nails, staples, and screws from the new door. Test fit and remove the door and sill pan separately to ensure they fit the rough opening. Apply at least three quarter inch lines of 100% silicone caulk along the length of the subfloor. Lines should start about one inch from the inside edge and be approximately one inch apart. If using a sill pan, add caulk to the back edge and seat the sill pan firmly in place. Now let's place the door in the opening from the outside. With help, hold the door so that it opens in the same direction noted earlier, with the hinges on the correct side. Center the door in the opening bottom first. Then, lean the top of the door into the opening. Insert shims to temporarily hold the door in place. Align the jams so they're flush with the interior finished drywall at all four corners and insert shims at the four corners. To ensure the door is square, place a two-foot carpenter square against the jam at all four corners. Checking if the door is level and plumb can be done from inside or outside by placing a level at the top and sides using the longest level possible for accuracy. You may find that the door is plumb and square but not flush with your walls because the walls are out of plumb. This may impact proper operation resulting in air and water infiltration. To compensate, split the variance on both sides, keeping the door centered between the walls. Interior casing can typically cover up to 3 16 of an inch of overlap between the door jam and drywall. Differences greater than 3 16 of an inch may require you to build out the jams. Make sure the reveal or gap between the door and the header is consistent all the way across. Adjusting shims is needed. From the outside with the door closed, make sure the door is making consistent contact with the weather stripping from top to bottom. If you see any bulges or gaps in the weather stripping, adjust shims and move jams in or out until consistent contact is achieved. Recheck for square, level, and plumb that the reveal is still even across the header 
and that the door is still making consistent contact with the weather stripping from top to bottom. Starting with the active door first, secure the jams to the studs by inserting screws to the shims at the corners. Recheck square, level, and plumb, and then repeat on the secondary side. To prevent splitting, drill pilot holes before driving screws. Screws should penetrate studs by at least an inch and a half. Insert shims between the jam and stud at each hinge. Tapered shims should be alternated in opposite directions to avoid twisting or facing the jams. Note, double doors require an additional shim at the center of the header. Check that the reveal between the door and both hinge jams is even and approximately 1 8 inch from top to bottom. Any time an adjustment is made, recheck that all four corners are square and that the header and side jams are level and plumb. Similar to earlier, pre-drill each jam where a shim has been placed and secure with 3-inch wood screws. Insert a longer hinge screw provided in the hardware bag into the vacant holes of each hinge for added strength and security. Once again, recheck square, plumb and level. Open and close the door several times to make sure the door is making good, consistent contact with the weather stripping and is swinging properly. Score and trim the shims with a utility knife. The molding piece attached to the secondary or inactive door that helps seal the gap between doors and prevents swinging through the opening is called the astragal. Astragals should be plumb with the jams and flush with the head jam, and proper placement of the flush bolts is critical to the operation of the primary or active door and the astragal. Open the secondary door and extend the top flush bolt. Place a small dab of white caulking on the end. Retract the flush bolt and close the secondary door. With the interior of the secondary door flush with the head jam, push and retract the flush bolt up against the head jam leaving the dab of white caulking where the hole should be drilled. Drill a 3 8 inch hole completely through the head jam. Make sure the secondary door is flush with the threshold and repeat the process for marking and drilling the hole for the bottom flush bolt. The bottom hole must penetrate the threshold by at least one and a half inches for the bolt to properly extend. The door is now ready for insulation and weather sealing. Now you can add the final touches by installing the lock set. The installation of your Masonite exterior patio door is now complete.